Hi, my name is Sammy, and today I'm going to take you through how I set up my config in Emacs. When it comes to writing software, there's a ton of different options that you can use. Uh, Emacs out of the box sucks, uh, but because it's so customizable, you can get all of the benefits of every other type of editor just by adding features to your Emacs. So first what we're going to do is we're going to go through uh, all of the other type of uh, programming editors that are available. Uh, we're going to see like why they're good and why people like them. And then we're going to see if we can uh, fold those benefits uh, and yoink them uh, into our Emacs config. So first off, we have Emacs's true team rocket rival, VI, or Vim if you like the improved version. It's a lightweight, terminal-based editor, and its main feature is that it has a command mode. So the idea is that when you're in command mode and you type keys, like just normal keys, like J or K, uh, instead of inserting text into the document, like the letters J or K, it does an action, like scrolling up and down in the document. And every command that you want to do is like singular key presses. This is also a common complaint against Emacs because you'd have to be an alien to hit that many modifier keys in order to enter some of the Emacs commands. But Emacs is customizable, so we can fix it. There are actually a bunch of Emacs packages that are specifically designed to mimic the behavior of them, like Viper and Evil Mode. But my favorite is actually a little-known package uh, made by Chris Doan called God Mode. I know, Emacs developers have really small egos. What this does is it gives Emacs an action mode, but it keeps all of the existing key bindings which means that control A just becomes A, control E to go to the end of the line just becomes E. If you want to search for stuff, you just type S. And it actually reuses all of the key bindings that you already have in Emacs. <laughs> for me, this is a huge improvement over packages like Evil and Viper Mode, because it means that I don't have to learn and memorize two different sets of key bindings. <laughs> it also means that I have access to all of the high-level and Emacs-only special commands, even when I'm in action mode. In Emacs, we can also get easy access to the terminal. Meta X shell opens the default shell, and Control U Meta X shell opens a new shell, even if the default shell is already open. For myself, I bound Control T to Meta X shell, and then in action mode, T opens a shell, and UT opens a new shell. Another common complaint about Emacs is that it's slow to start up, but this is easy to solve. You just never close your Emacs. Now let's compare Emacs to another class of tools, Integrated Development Environments, or IDEs for short. These are big, heavy programs like IntelliJ, NetBeans, and Eclipse. Integrated development environments are big and bulky, but they also provide a ton of features and are much more than just simple text editors. In particular, they understand the syntax of individual programming languages, so they can provide things like automated code completion, type inference, syntax highlighting, and automatic error highlighting, just to name a few. There are also full development environments that are integrated with other common tools that are used to write software. In this video, I'm going to tell you about my workflow for writing Clojure in Emacs, although the story is very similar for other languages like Python. Out of the box, Clojure mode comes with nice syntax highlighting, but if you really want the full features of an integrated development environment, you have to install another package, CIDR mode. CIDR mode gives you all of the features of an IDE, including code evaluation. This one is one of my favorites. It lets you evaluate any expression with Control x Control e like so. Importantly, it lets you execute individual lines of code. This means that you can develop interactively, taking the best feature from a certain other program. CIDR also gives you intelligent code completion and gives you tools to find documentation, go to function definitions, and find the references of where a function is used. This is really impressive because it's language specific, meaning that rather than just operating on the text, it understands the language of closure and has these features built on navigating around the structure of the language itself. There's a few more tools you could use to make Emacs look even more like a traditional IDE, but honestly, I don't use these. Emacs is all about efficiency, so I updated my key bindings to be shorter for the commands that I use the most. I like to think about key presses as information sent through an information theory channel, so my key bindings should represent roughly a Huffman coding for the commands that I send. In particular, I set Control O to switch window, semicolon to enable and disable God mode. I remapped 9 and 0 to open parentheses and close parentheses in closure mode. And then I added a bunch of key bindings so that I don't have to use space to enter a normal character while in God mode. So, for example, Control X, Control V to switch buffers instead of Control X, V. 
I think the lesson here is don't be afraid to go big when setting up your key binding. In certain modes, I even remapped normal keys, like numbers, to other keys and commands. Those who are watching closely might notice that I left out the best editor of all. I'm talking, of course, about Sublime. In all seriousness, though, there are some things that I do to make my Emacs look nice. I take out all the toolbars and menu bars, pick out a dark theme and monospace font, use rainbow delimiters mode, and add a tree-based file browser. If you really can't live without Sublime, you can add a mini-map view that I don't. So yeah, that's my Emacs config. Overall, I try to keep it simple so the editor gets out of the way and I can focus on writing code. 